Hello and welcome to the Inflectra webinar on robotic process automation of Dynamics Nav with Rupees. My name is Adam Sandman and I'll be introducing the webinar today and my colleague Dennis Markovsev will be doing the live demonstration. In today's webinar, we'll first of all be giving you an overview of the capabilities of Rapiz across the board and how it can be used for robotic process automation and test automation. We'll talk about some of the scenarios you can use specifically for RPA and then we have a very detailed live demo scenario that my colleague Dennis will be demonstrating. We'll then talk about some of the skills you need to have a team doing process automation using Rapiz. We'll then look at our specific offering, the products and the services that come with it and then we have a Q&A. So first of all, Rapiz is our automation tool designed for both test automation and robotic process automation. It can handle automation of various different types of application. And uh, in today's demonstration, we'll be looking at Dynamics Nav, which is a desktop application, but it's also very capable of dealing with mobile and web applications. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, it also can handle web services, and in addition to that, can get its data from various sources. For example, it can connect to a, a SQL or ODBC compatible database. It can read emails that come into an email system using an email library. It can access flat files on the file system and perform command line operations. It can manipulate text in an application and it also has full support for accessing and reading and writing to Excel spreadsheets without Excel being installed, which is a really cool part. And then lastly, it does have flexible reporting and orchestration that we'll talk about. So the first thing is, Rapiz does support many different platforms and technologies, which you can see here. So it can be used to automate processes and tasks that may cross different applications. For example, it can connect to a web application to retrieve data and load that into a desktop application or a, or a terminal application. It can access web services. It can integrate with a variety of different tools. So Rupees is a great product to automate different platforms and technologies either together in an integrated process or separately. When it comes to web applications, Rapiz has very strong support for different kinds of browsers. For example, it can record and play actions in IE, Firefox, and Chrome, and it can also playback tests in Microsoft Edge, Safari on an Apple, and also the Opera browser as well. It also supports various different cloud-based networks, such as Source Labs, Kobaton, and BrowserStack. When it comes to desktop application, Rupees can automate most technologies you may come across. For example, it can automate .NET applications, Windows applications, Win32, Java, Qt Framework, and a variety of other packaged applications as well, such as Microsoft Dynamics, AX, and Nav. Rapiz also handles mobile applications, both web applications running in a mobile browser, but also native apps written directly to run on the platform. And it does support both Android and iOS versions, both tablet and cell phone. In addition to UI testing though, an important feature set in Rapiz is its ability to do web services. And it can call web services, both SOAP and REST, either as a standalone test or more commonly, it can call web services as part of an integrated test. So it can, for example, read data from a spreadsheet, load it into a UI, and then read it back from a web service API. Or read data from a spreadsheet and load it into an API directly. And one of the key aspects of process automation is that, in addition to being able to connect to different tools and automate the processes to achieve business tasks, you need to be able to monitor them and schedule them. Spira Team is the scheduling and orchestration engine for a piece. And in the demonstration, you will see how you can save your automated scripts back into Spira Team and how you can deploy and automate them directly from the Spira Team web-based console. Now, there are many different tasks you can conduct with robotic process automation. For example, you could take a form uh, and then an external file of data and load that form. Maybe it's a web form, maybe it's a desktop application form, but you can read that file and load in the data. For a common example of this might be you've gone to a conference and you've got a file, a CSV file, that contains a list of all the attendees and you need to load that into your CRM system. And so you can read through that file, load in the data, and now you've got it into your CRM system, which is excellent. Another possibility is you've got emails coming in, possibly some kind of marketing automation, the emails come in, and you need to create a record in a legacy system. And if that system does not support um, an API access for reading the email, well, you guess what? You can have Rapiz read the email, open up the UI of the application, and just create the records that way. 
Now, another option is if you have a spreadsheet and it comes out of one system and you need to load it into another system. So perhaps you have two systems that you want to migrate from system A to system B and neither of them have APIs or if they do have APIs they're hard to program and there isn't the time to develop such an interface. Instead, just simply automate the UI in one application to run a report to save the data into a spreadsheet and then, and then in the second application you can simply read the spreadsheet and then load it into the UI of that second application. So it gives you the ability to migrate data from one system to another without programming. The other thing you can use it for is scraping a web page. Suppose you've got some data on a website that you need to be able to get all the records from a web page and then load them into a file, which is really the reverse of the previous examples. You can do that by just scraping the web page using the web testing and web um, accessing tools. Uh, similarly, we can also do it for desktop applications with RPs. So you can scra scrape the screen, get a bitmap, read the bitmap to get the text. And we also do have term terminal automation. So if you are dealing with legacy mainframe applications, AS400 or the equivalent, we can read those from the terminal or we can send text to the terminal. So we can do import and export from a terminal application as well. So in the demo that we'll be doing today, um, Dennis is going to be showing you how you can use Rapiz to load in some data from a spreadsheet into Dynamics Nav. And it will do it very specifically for a single test case, a single test case at the beginning. And then once we've got that working, we'll show you how you can use the same recorded set of steps for a large data set to take a task that could take a human weeks to do and show how you can do it in minutes. Uh, the speed of playback is much, much faster than a human. The, the, it's, you don't have the issues of, of error-prone data entry. It is just a, a great way to automate a business process. And so you'll see how to create the building blocks in Rupees, where you build up the single task set, how you can then automate it, and how you can put different tasks together as building blocks to create an integrated scenario as well. And then you'll be able to see, using Spire Team, how you can orchestrate that task using our web-based management and orchestration tool. Thank you, Adam. Uh, in a live demo, I'm going to show how you can create uh, an automated test or robots to perform routine tasks uh, with your piece. And also at the end of the demo, I will execute a pretty complex scenario that uh, imports data from third party system into Dynamics Nav. So currently on the screen, you can see Dynamics Nav client running. And here is Rupees, it's Windows application that you install on the same machine where you have Dynamics Client running. And you use Rupees to develop uh, your test automation or RPA solutions and to execute them. So I'm going to create uh, a new um, project in Rupees. I will create it locally. I need to provide a name. Uh, and uh, I'm going to implement a pretty simple scenario that uh, creates uh, a new customer in Dynamics Nav uh, system. So I need to provide uh, the name of my test, customer demo. Let's give it some number, for example, three. And uh, I need to mm, choose a technology uh, to use for uh, my test automation. Uh, Rapiz can test uh, the, uh, desktop applications and also it can test uh, mobile applications and uh, web apps uh, running in different browsers. Dynamics Nav is a desktop application, so I choose a Windows desktop app technology. And I choose uh, Rupees Visual Language Representation. Uh, this is a default representation uh, that Rupees uses to um, generate a uh, recorded uh, script. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, implement your tests uh, using JavaScript, but it's for advanced users and for uh, pretty complex scenarios. In many cases, uh, RVL is sufficient and it's really uh, the most effective approach. So I will show you the RVL uh, approach in more details a bit later. So just choose RVL at this point. And I'm going to record uh, a few um, steps uh, from Dynamics Nav. So I press uh, record button. And I need to choose the application to record from. And Rupees shows uh, recording activity dialog and it starts intercepting keyboard and mouse and will be adding actions uh, along the way while 
I will be interacting with the application. So I go to customers list in dynamic snap and you can see that uh, rupees uh, captures uh, that I interacted with the tree and uh, my action was uh, click note and I clicked on the note uh, with text uh, customers. Rupees uh, recognizes uh, UI controls inside dynamic snap and uh, it means that uh, a test or robot uh, does not depend on a screen resolution and uh, created uh, automation solution uh, can be executed uh, on in any Windows environment and even on different versions of Dynamic Snap. Dynamic Snap has very, very good uh, forward and backward uh, compatibility. So, for example, if you create uh, a test for Dynamic Snap uh, 2012 and then uh, you are going to upgrade to new versions of Dynamic Snap, provided that you don't change the configuration, uh, the test just will continue to run. You will not need to update your tests. So this is a very good thing about dynamic snap and rupees. So let's continue with our scenario. I click on new button and I click OK. And now I see uh, the form uh, for a new customer and I need to provide some details about the customer I'm going to create. So I click on the name field, enter the value. It will be Google here. And now I need to press a button which is under recording activity dialog. So I pause interception of mouse and keyboard for a while. Move this dialog aside and resume recording. OK. Uh, so we added uh, a customer and now it is in this uh, big uh, grid of customers, table of customers. So how to check that uh, the customer is here. So I'm going to click on the filter, enter the name uh, of the customer and click on filter. Okay, here it is. Uh, now I click on the name and you can see that uh, Rupees recognized uh, click uh, on the table. I clicked and agreed and my action was click sell and uh, I clicked in the name column on Google value. So Rupees has very, very good support for grids in Dynamic Snap. And uh, since it recognizes grids uh, as a complex uh, control, if for example, next time you launch Dynamic Snap client, and developers uh, did some changes and moved columns around and the name column is not the second column anymore. A rapist will still be able to find it. And even if you have more lines in the grid displayed, a rapist uh, will find uh, the value, the correct row that uh, contains the value we are searching for. Also, uh, in a grid, uh, you can uh, address a cell not only by column name and value in a cell, you can also use traditional approach with a column number and row number. All right, so I am going to delete the customer I just created to move the system to initial state because I am going to execute the test many times with different data. All right, so let's go to initial page of our test and press uh, finish. Entropy generates a uh, recorded script. Uh, this is the RVL and uh, this is basically an Excel spreadsheet uh, with a few defined columns which are pretty simple to understand. For example, object column contains IDs of controls with which are interacted during recording. All these objects were added uh, to the object tree and you can find them here in the left side panel of objects. And 
for each object and for each line uh, in RVL, uh, you have object ID and in action column you have an action that uh, a script must perform during playback of a test. For example, do click, or if you, if it is a more complex section like do set text and it receives uh, some needs some parameters, uh, do set text need a text value to enter. Uh, you may specify those parameters uh, in the last three columns. Here you specify parameter name, parameter type. Parameter type can be string, number, boolean, or object ID, and parameter value. Unlike programming languages uh, where you need to bother about some syntax things like uh, braces, uh, quotes, escaping sequences, here in RVL you just enter uh, values exactly in the same way like they need to be entered uh, into the application during test playback. Okay, so let's execute our test to see how it works. So it now should create a new customer, uh, Google, in the system. So you can see that uh, execution is pretty fast. Uh, much faster than can be performed by human and this is really uh, good uh, when you do some RPA tasks or want to execute your automated uh, test coverage. After execution uh, you can see the detailed report of what was executed, uh, each statement of uh, that was executed against the application. If everything is okay, then your report is all green. If, if there are errors, uh, you will see them uh, in red uh, color. If you want to output some additional information uh, into report, you can always modify your uh, RVL and provide uh, some more information here. So I will show how to do that. First, I'm going to parameterize uh, my test and uh, specify the data I enter into the application uh, in a table that is defined before uh, the script logic. So I'm going to create a map and here I have a template uh, for a table. I need to specify name for this table and it has some columns here. I will need just one column in this demo and let's name it uh, customer. So here, for example, I will add two more customers, Apple and Microsoft. And now I can use this demo, uh, uh, I can use this map, uh, this data in my test. So here, when I enter customer name, I need to choose uh, this uh, table and the column name. So during playback, rupees will get the data from the table and will use it uh, in this statement. Okay, where else I need to choose it? Uh, data, customer, and the last uh, where I click on the customer name uh, in the table before delete the customer. All right, so we parameterized our test with the data defined here, right in the same spreadsheet where we have uh, the test logic. And if you want to output the value that was used by the test, uh, we can uh, do the following. Let me delete lines I don't need. And here, uh, before creating a new customer, I'm going to insert one more statement. Uh, there is a global object uh, called tester and it has a method message. And here I am going to output the name of the customer that we are going to create. So let's execute uh, our test. And now it should create uh, customer uh, Apple. It will uh, grab uh, the first uh, value from the table we just created. 
All right. So currently we have data uh, defined right uh, in our uh, RVL spreadsheet. Uh, what if we, and let's go here at the beginning to see the output of our uh, additional login. So it has a customer name displayed here. Uh, what if you want to iterate through all the lines uh, of the table? In this case, uh, we need to define a loop. So to define a loop, I just need to select the steps that I want need to include uh, in my loop. Here it is and just select wrap uh, selection into a loop. And this loop should receive the table we just created uh, as an input. So it means that uh, this loop will iterate through all the lines uh, of the map and will apply this data uh, to the same uh, logic uh, of the screen. So let's execute our test and we will see that uh, it will create uh, two customers uh, in the system why by one by one so we have data uh, defined inside rvl and uh, in many cases it's much more convenient to define data that is used by a test or a robot uh, in external spreadsheet uh, with rupees you can create and edit uh, spreadsheets and uh, the good thing about it is that you don't need to have excel installed uh, on a machine so i am going to create a new spreadsheet and add it uh, to the test let's leave default name here and here is the spreadsheet spreadsheet editor inside your piece and here i specify column name and let's add another value here for example dell and now in my REL, I just need to bind uh, to this spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is to create one more map. And the type of this map uh, is range. And it is it will be attached to a spreadsheet. Data XLSX we just created. And let's give it the same name data to overwrite the table uh, we created before so and we don't need to change anything in our test it will grab uh, data from the map uh, we just created and will iterate through its values so let's execute the test and now it should grab uh, data from spreadsheet and create a Dell uh, customer in the system okay so here it is so currently we have a test uh, we created and executed locally uh, on a single machine but uh, in many cases uh, you need to schedule and execute uh, the same test with different parameters remotely on different hosts, different machines in your environment. And for this purpose, uh, Rupees uh, is tightly integrated uh, with the Spira team. Uh, this is lifecycle management solution uh, from Inflectra. And uh, it is used for uh, planning uh, releases, requirements. You can store documents inside it. It's a web base, so every team member has access to this data from their desktop machines or from tablets or even phones. And uh, you can track uh, bugs, incidents, and tasks using uh, Spire team. And what's most important for us today is that you can manage your uh, test or RPA activities. So I am going to create uh, a new test case in the system. So let's call it the same way we named uh, our demo test. 
it was like a customer demo tree, I believe. Here is the test case. And now what I am going to do is uh, to save uh, my uh, scenario into Spira. And here I will choose uh, the test case I just created. So when you save to Spira, uh, all the files of the tests are uploaded uh, into Spira. And when you execute this test on some remote machines, all the files uh, that are required for execution will be uh, automatically downloaded uh, on that machine. All right, so we upload it. Uh, on a machine where you are going to execute uh, the test, uh, you need to have a special component running. Uh, it is called uh, Rupees Launcher. It is installed uh, together with uh, Rupees. It's just a service that uh, sits in the background. It is connected to Spira team and it queries uh, on the regular basis. Uh, in my case, it's one minute. If there are any jobs uh, to execute on the current host and the host is uh, identified by a token that you specify here. And here in Spira team, we need to create a test set and assign this test set to this particular host. So I am going to create a new test set. New customers demo. So I created a test set. And here on the overview tab, I need to specify the host uh, where uh, Rapids Launcher is running. So it will be NAV VM. And I need to choose test cases uh, to execute uh, within this uh, test set. I want to execute new customer demo three. And the last thing I want to, to do is to set a schedule for execution uh, of this test set. I can execute it uh, using uh, some recurrence pattern uh, daily or weekly. It's good for automated testing solutions or you can execute it uh, on some uh, planet date or even uh, on some external event like a schedule on build. So let's set here some date in the past to execute it uh, right now. Okay, let's look at Rupees Launcher. So within the 10 seconds, actually we can close Rupees completely. So within a few seconds, uh, it will do a query to Spira test. Okay, it found the test set to execute, downloaded all the files into temporary folder, and now it executes the test. Okay, and it should use the data from Excel spreadsheet, the Dell customer. And what's good about this <coughs> execution is that uh, all the report data is uploaded into Spira team. And you can see uh, this uh, report uh, in Spira. And uh, let's refresh. And you can see status of execution, uh, status of each line. So if anything uh, goes wrong, then you have a chance to analyze and troubleshoot uh, execution. It's possible to enable screenshots uh, in, during Rupees execution. And in this case, screenshots will be uploaded here and uh, you will see what was exactly happened happening during execution uh, of a test. Okay, so uh, we have a very simple scenario implemented and now I am going to proceed to a more complex uh, scenario. Let's open uh, our piece. So as I said before, you can use a different approach uh, to implementing a script in Rupees. It can be either RVL. So let me open some complex scenario like 
RPA dynamic say X. It was created for X, um, but uh, it's okay for illustration purposes. So here in RVL, you can have uh, multiple sheets uh, within the same spreadsheet and you can just call contains contents of each sheet uh, one by one. And on each sheet, you can uh, perform recording uh, separately and uh, execution separately. It, it is good when you need to break down some long, long scenario uh, into parts and uh, develop them uh, independently. What's good about sheets in your piece is that uh, you can uh, execute just uh, a particular sheet or even you can execute uh, part of the sheet. So you can select lines you want to execute and just choose place selection. This is very good when you do development and you do troubleshooting of your uh, automated test or, or robot. All right, so you can do in RVL and you can also do using javascript so let me open another uh, testing scenario uh, if you have uh, team members who prefer to uh, coding they can use power of javascript to uh, implement scenarios as well and here i have uh, a scenario that uh, imports data uh, into dynamic snap. Uh, let me open uh, the spreadsheet here. Okay, so here is the data that was exported from some third party system and it contains information about books. It has a let's scroll it to the left. It has a name of a book, author, Jenner. And uh, what this uh, script does, it creates uh, author as a vendor in the system. It creates uh, gender as a category. And uh, for each book title, it creates an item in the system. If uh, such an item or vendor already exists, then a new record uh, is not created. And uh, when something is created, repeat outputs IDs uh, for created items right into the same uh, spreadsheet. So actually, I can uh, close uh, repeat at this point. And I have uh, a batch file that executes this scenario right on desktop. So I am going to launch it. Okay, so. And now our repeats will do a uh, very long and uh, complex uh, data import uh, into the system. So it creates uh, categories first. And you can see that execution is very, very fast. Uh, it's much, much faster that can be performed uh, by human uh, tester or operator. So while it is running, uh, uh, what I can say about uh, how you organize uh, the team to manage uh, your test automation and uh, RPA efforts. So in a team, you may have just one uh, developer who has a uh, code writing experience, programming experience, uh, and uh, this person may uh, implement some complex stuff uh, using JavaScript. So if it is a real life uh, project, then uh, anyway, you will need to do some uh, coding, but it's enough to have just one programmer uh, in the team to do that. In most of the cases, RVL is sufficient and to do RVL uh, scripting, uh, you don't need to be a programmer. You just need to use mouse and keyboard uh, to select some data from drop downs and to enter values that needs to be sent to an application uh, during playback. So, for example, if you have a team of 10 people, you may have uh, nine people uh, using RVL. 
and uh, business analyst may just use uh, Excel uh, to provide data uh, to be sent to the application and you may have just one developer to implement some uh, complex uh, stuff in JavaScript if it is required. Okay, so you can see here when uh, Rupees creates a new item, it also links it to a category and to vendor. And it may scroll down the table to find the correct value. So this scrolling uh, is completely uh, automatic. You don't need to bother about it. And Rupees uh, supports every UI control in dynamic snap. So we can interact with the ribbon, with buttons, with uh, fast steps, uh, with uh, grids, with anything. And it doesn't depend uh, on screen uh, resolution. So I am going to interfere into the process uh, to simulate situation when something goes wrong and to see what will happen during execution. Okay, so execution was uh, interrupted and we may go to rupees and uh, see uh, the report here. Uh, the last reports are presented here and the last report should display uh, some error uh, that uh, the process uh, did not complete successfully. This is uh, very good. So if something goes wrong, you immediately notified about uh, any issues and you can troubleshoot them. All right, so thanks for your attention and I'm going to pass control back uh, to Adam. Well, thanks, Dennis, for that great demonstration. Uh, that was fantastic. And uh, one of the questions we often get asked about process automation is, what skills do we need? Do I need a whole team of programmers? And that's the great thing. You don't need a team of programmers to perform robotic process automation, unlike trying to integrate two systems using an API, where you may need a very advanced skill set. With RPA, you can simply have a, a person who can construct the script, a um, test analyst or a business process analyst. They can see the, under the steps they have to perform, and they can use Rapiece to follow the steps as we did today by clicking on the application, entering the data, and following the process, and then recording it and saving it into Spira Team for orchestration. Using the Rapiece visual language, you generally do not need programming skills, just basic knowledge of the application, maybe some in industry or domain knowledge if it's an application in a specific industry, for example, maybe some accounting skills or warehouse management skills, depending on which modules of Dynamics you would be automating. Um, now, there may be some cases where you might want to use some JavaScript. Uh, for example, if you're going to perform some kind of validation or calculations as part of the test, the great thing with Rapiz is those particular sections can be coded as functions by a programmer, and then they can be used from the main visual language by the pro process analyst without needing to be a programmer. So you can have a team of maybe 10 to 20 um, scripters who create the script using visual language, maybe one programmer who can write advanced things to do additional calculations if and when it's necessary. And that's one of the key features of Rapiz, just to reiterate, the visual language. It's very easy to create a process, a set of tasks, and all you do is drag and drop the items and the actions for the left-hand side and drag them into the, the visual language grid. And it's an easy-to-read format. You can drive it from, from a data grid using the maps and the loops or from an external data set or from a database. It's much easier to create the tests. It's much easier to read. And most importantly, it is much easier to maintain. Now, when it comes to our offering, we are not offering just the tool Rapiz. Rapiz is a fantastic tool for robotic process automation, as I hope you've seen, but we're also going to offer some training services. So, if you're interested in the tool, we can actually bundle it with training services so your team can get a quick start guide where they will be up to speed in maybe three to four hours of how to use the tool, and that way they can get started on automating tasks rapidly.
And then for those companies that don't want to be in the business of doing this themselves, we do also have a partnership with an implementation firm that can actually implement these tasks for you. In which case, you're going to give us the business problem, which would be, for example, let's move some data from our spreadsheet into our application. So you give us the tasks and then our implementation service team will take those tasks and automate them using rupees. So instead of having to hire a team of people to manually do the data entry, we can do it for you much faster and much more reliably with much greater accuracy. So thanks for watching today's webinar. Um, I hope it was very helpful. Just to recap a few things, uh, Rupees is a fantastic tool for process automation. It can pro automate desktop web mobile applications, web services. It can automate database connections and database access. It can read emails. It can access the file system. It can manipulate text. It can read and write two spreadsheets without needing Excel installed. And it has a fully flexible reporting and orchestration engine integrated with it as well. So, if you do like what you saw um, and you'd like to become a partner of ours, we are looking to sign up partners and resellers of Dynamics who will be interested in partnering with us. We offer both a reseller and affiliate model. If you're a reseller of Dynamics and you'd like to add uh, rupees to your list of, of applications that you resell, then being a reseller will make a lot of sense. If you're an implementer and you don't want to necessarily sell our products but you want to refer them and get a commission, then an affiliate is the option for you. In either case, if you sign up to become either a reseller or an affiliate, we are offering for a limited time discounts of up to 75% for partners in rupees licenses. And if you do sign up to be a partner, either a reseller or an affiliate, and you purchase some licenses, depending on the number you purchase, we're also offering some free training for a limited time. Um, please contact sales at inflector.com if you have any questions about this. So thanks for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about Dynamics AX and Rupees, we have a video that will be on our YouTube channel in a couple of weeks' time as well. Thanks so much.